Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line is the first card I'll be putting on the ban section for a few reasons. Before I get into those reasons, however, let's compare it to the other frequently talked about needle fiber related card that people want banned, Jet Synchron. Jet is easily the best card to get consistent access to needle fiber, considering its consistency with tuning and the discard is amazing in some strategies. For example, Eldritch. While some people are arguing that Jet is the problem because it enables the needle fiber plays, I personally completely disagree and think that Needle itself is the problem, but because in my opinion it's too early to ban Needle Fiber, let me explain my reasoning for O-Lion. The problem with banning Jet is we can always just substitute a Jet for any other one card Needle Fiber, and bear in mind that there are numerous replacements. The first one that comes to mind is Despot 003, and the other being the Lefty and Righty Driver package. If we really want to hit Needle Fiber, which obviously we do, it's the biggest problem with this format, we can't hit the consistency pieces or else the engine will continue to thrive, as there are just too many options to keep in mind. This is why I suggest O-Lion getting banned, and now I'll explain the reasoning for it. Let's start with the basic combo that involves you climbing from Needle Fiber into eventually a Ruridon, summoning the three tokens and then you just do your combo from there. But what's important to keep in mind is that the Ruridon will summon an O-Lion from the deck in order to enable the level 2 tuner plays on along with the token O-Lion provides. Without O-Lion, you're losing out on the token provided and the specific level O-Lion provides towards your synchro plays, and it's not that there aren't other options with the Auroradon plays, but rather it does make the ceiling lower without actually hitting Needle Fiber. Another thing to keep in mind is the traditional Needle Fiber at Emancipator combo requires an O-Lion to work because it will float into the level 3 body along with the Marcher on field. With O-Lion gone, it definitely reduces is the ceiling of this deck. If I could have, I would have just put Needle Fiber on the ban section and called it quits, but I think it is too soon to ban the card. Additionally, bear in mind that this ban list as a whole may not even happen. We're still in the crush card situation and Konami may decide to delay it with the lack of events, which is totally understandable. The next card on this list is another Needle Fiber hit, Deskbot001. So it seems like I'm hitting everything other than Jet, but this is actually important to note. The ban of 001 means the current core combo isn't playable anymore because they all require you to play O-Lion and 001. So without these cards, people are going to have to be more creative with how they approach these combos. But get debated because I still put Jet on this list. Not because it's a starter, however. So if O-Lion and 001 are banned, people can still do stuff with the deck, especially because you literally just replace 001 with Jet and it almost does nothing. While you wouldn't be using Jet as a starter anymore, it is still a enabling the combo to work. By removing Jet altogether, you're essentially removing all of the good machine targets for Needle Fiber to access Auroradon. By removing Jet altogether, you're removing some of the best targets Needle Fiber has, and without the insane targets, the power level decreases tremendously of Needle Fiber. Basically, I'm trying to hit every card around Needle Fiber that makes it so good without actually hitting Needle Fiber. Next, I think there are just a few things to clean up in terms of the format. Let's get Block Dragon out of the way because that card does need to be banned. I don't see a Block Dragon ban killing an Emancipator, but I do see its resiliency and grind game get hurt tremendously by this hit. Next, Dragon Buster Destruction Sword should get banned. While I don't think it's the biggest problem right now, especially with all of the other degeneracy in the format, it's just healthier for the game to not have it exist, and that's why I feel it should get banned. It realistically only because of the degeneracy it provides, and I have the goal of this ban list is trying to remove all degeneracy without hitting Eternity Code, Secret Slayer, or do Overload products, then this is what my approach would be. I'm gonna interrupt this ban list prediction video for a second to announce that next Wednesday will be the official release of the Blady On The Go podcast. This is the first time I'm announcing it, and this podcast will have guests every week from Yugi tubers in the community like Nim Nim and Ruggles and so many more, to pro players like Cody Angelov, Ryan Levine, and again, so many more. If you want to tune into an enjoyable Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast with interviews from all of these amazing guests, make sure to tune in next Wednesday for the first episode at 8 a.m. EST. Or, if you want any content earlier, you can support my $5 tier on my channel memberships and Patreon to watch it two days early, or you can watch a highlight from the episode two days early. With that, 
let's continue the video. The next card on the list is True King of All Calamities to Zero. I think most people realize that this was going to be a problem card when it was released, as long as there is enough consistent access to get to it, and the Needle Fiber combo decks can easily access it, along with tons of other strategies like Dinosaur, Generator, Deep Sea, and so many more, Calamities has somewhat started to come into the spotlight as being terrifying to stare down against, and much easier to access with the release of these three products. Because of all of this, I think Calamities is just too powerful and too imposing and now consistent enough to access to not put it to zero. As I stated earlier, I'm not hitting anything in specific from Dual Overload, Secret Slayers, or Eternity Code as, again, it's just too early for something big to happen to those set. The final card I want to mention in the Forbidden section is going to be Magical Meltdown Band. So there's an argument for both hitting Alistair to 1, which makes the field spell potentially more cloggy, or just banning Meltdown outright to make it so that you don't need to draw one of the Alistairs. I think banning Meltdown from the two options is better, because you're either going to still be able to play 5 copies of Alistair, I be it a lot less resiliently, or by banning Meltdown you make it so there are only 3 ways to access Alistair in the main deck. The thing is, while I like the idea of having Alistair at one to make it less resilient. First off, the fact that Meltdown is a field spell means you can tech Alistair into other decks more easily, making the engine more splashable than it should be. And secondly, Meltdown's fusion protection effect is nuts in Shadal, and it was going to need a hit anyways if Shadal ever came back into the meta. Third, there's another argument to be had that it's actually less resilient having Alistair at 3 and Meltdown at 0 than vice versa. As First off, you can't focus on the invoked package as a core part of the deck, and because of that, we could also see invocation to be played at 1, which again, makes the engine less resilient. Shockingly, I can't see anything get limited because again, Secret Slayers is still too fresh in my opinion. For the sake of analysis, however, let's say we can hit anything ignoring release date, then I immediately would ban Needlefire because first off, it solves the problem with all of the other needle fiber targeted bans, but secondarily, I still think needle fiber will be an amazing card after this ban list. They won't ban needle right now, regardless, I'd even limit it for the sake of the decision to use it as either a combo enabler, or for later on in the game to push for Selene or access code plays or general grind gameplays overall. When talking about Secret Slayers as well, I'd personally limit Scarlet Sanguine and An Emancipator Researcher. Scarlet Sanguine is most certainly the most important card in the Eldritch strategy for giving it the ability to get access to Eldritch on the opponent's turn without requiring anything else, for example an Eldritch in your grave. I don't think this limit will kill the deck, as if you can just get out one Eldritch and have it stick either on the field or in the grave, you can use your quick play Eldritch spell to bring back Eldritch for the following turn. But it's definitely a crucial hit for reducing the consistency and overall longevity the deck has. For Researcher, it is just the best Ad Emancipator card. You only need any rock on the field, making it the most generic Ad Emancipator tuner, whether that's in a beard token, a guardian, etc. Because of all of this, limiting it may not kill the deck, but it'll need to be more creative with its approach, because as well as the deck loses a lot of the ability to push through boards and it gets a reduction in consistency. So with all of this, in mind, that's how I'd approach the June 2020 ban list, ignoring cards coming off the list. If you do want to know what I think can come off the list, I'd say Pantheism to 3, ABC Dragon Buster to 2 to 3, maybe Tour Guide to 3, although honestly I feel like this card may cause problems later on due to what it can do by itself, and many other cards. The last thing I'll mention is there shouldn't be a ban list at all until events come back. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or my other ones. Join my Discord for upcoming Discord exclusive tournaments and awesome community and so much more. Make sure to stay tuned for the podcast coming up. Thank you all so much for watching and with that, I hope to see you soon.